Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso here on SABC3. Now, this morning, Dr. Mornay Duplessis from the World Wildlife Fund joins us to dispel some rumours surrounding the poaching of rhinos for their horns. We also have a look at the recent statistics released in 2012 showing the number of rhinos poached so far this year. Good morning. Welcome to Expresso. Good morning. Lisa. It's only been a short year, four months into the year, and uh, rhino poaching is on the increase in South Africa. I know it's been a full moon recently, and that's very worrying for you guys, especially um, surrounding sur rhino poaching. Can you give us a, st a figure or a stat that we're standing on at the moment in South Africa? Yes, uh, Liesl, you know, the, the most recent uh, statistic available from government is 159 rhinos mm -hmm. we've lost this year. And this puts us on a trajectory to 600 rhinos for the year if it continues at this rate. This is obviously more than last year, yeah. and that in itself is very worrying to us. Well, now, a lot of viewers have asked questions via Twitter and our Facebook. They're asking, how can us as the public get involved against this fight? What can we do apart from making donations? Yes, I, I understand very much how helpless uh, people must feel in the sense that you read in the press and media of these uh, atrocious events that take place, and we all really want to do something. Mm -hmm. So. It is frustrating when you feel somewhat helpless as an individual who has a very deep interest. But uh, the reality is that uh, there's very little that the individual can do other than mm -hmm. to make sure that they understand the facts surrounding these issues, that they make their voices heard wherever they can, participate in social media uh, discussions, etc., but based on fact as much mm -hmm. as possible. And then obviously to support the key organizations in what they're doing, either financially or through understanding that there are lots of men and women who dedicate their lives to this cause and who are really pulling out every stop possible. Now, there's some deep-rooted, I don't know if we can call them myths, uh, in, in Eastern culture about uh, the effects of rhino horn. We saw in headlines recently, it's more expensive than coke. It's a, it's a good cure for, uh, as we'll say in Afrikaans, a babalas or a hangover. Um, fact or myth? You know, um, the fact is that rhino horn is taken, that it's being used for many uh, different purposes, some of which is based on deep ch uh, traditional Chinese medicine. And uh, whether Western medicine uh, proves that it's uh, uh, effective or not is irrelevant in that case. However, what we've seen recently in the last four or five years, particularly in Vietnam, mm -hmm. is the spiking of new uses that uh, have been marketed virally for example, a cure as a cure to cancer. Uh, there's clearly no medical evidence. And when you're dealing with terminally ill people, you are going to find people who are very vulnerable and want to grab at every last straw. Okay. So, so this is very problematic. And then uh, more worryingly is that these um, new fads of uh, using this to treat bubbleus and and any kind of uh, feeling a little bit out of kilter with your inner self, as yes. it were, uh, these new uses are, are, are very worrying. And uh, we believe that these are the ones that we can actually deal with, uh, particularly by uh, making it so uncool in the societies in which these new uses are sprouting up in Vietnam, Thailand, and China, uh, that uh, it is possible to actually deal with that demand side. The more deeper traditional Chinese medicines um, uh, and their uses for the out of kilterness of yin and yes. yang, etc. Those are deep ancient beliefs that, that are very difficult to dispel. Now, as a country, as South Africa, what are we doing uh, to, to stop poaching? Well, you know, um, our state authorities, which uh, must claim the credit for bringing rhinos back from mm. between 20 and 50 individuals in the late 1800s, to over 20,000 animals currently in Africa, that is black and white rhinos. Uh, this is a phenomenal conservation success based on much dedication mm -hmm. of these authorities. Uh, and we continue to put resources into these things. Organizations like Ezemvelo, KwaZulu-Natal, uh, South African National Parks, uh, Eastern Cape Conservation Authority, etc., are throwing everything mm -hmm. at this problem. It's no longer an issue of conservation as much as it is an issue of crime. And therefore, uh, conservationists are not always the best placed in order to combat crime because uh, conservationists are ultimately about conservation. Of course. And uh, so this is taking a very different dimension. You said the prices are currently um, uh, at the levels of cocaine, 
Now, when you're dealing with something like that, you're really dealing with some serious criminal syndicates who are making uh, money out of this. And it's very, very worrying. But thank you very much for joining us today, Dr. Monet Duplessis, from the World Wildlife Fund. Now, you know you can make a difference. You've just heard uh, him telling us that you can use your powers on social media, Facebook and Twitter, to make it heard and uh, stand up against the fight uh, for rhino poaching. We're going over to Ewan and Leanne now. Stay with Expresso and SABC3.